In this video, we want to write our same little Hello World beginner application, but we want to do it inside of Eclipse instead of having it done uh, on the command line. So, first I'm going to pull up Eclipse. Now you might have it installed in such a way you can do this through a GUI. I actually like doing things on the command line. So I will bring up my Eclipse on the command line and I'm going to use this workspace here. You're probably happy with the default workspace for your own work. And this is what you'll get the first time that you bring up Eclipse. You can of course go through this information as you wish. I'm going to jump to the workbench. Now when you use Eclipse or other IDEs like IntelliJ, you generally have to create some type of project that you're going to write your code in. And there are different you know, ways that you could organize your code. Something to note, projects are typically fairly large. I tell my students that they really don't want to um, create a new project for like every little thing that they write. In fact, I'm going to put pretty much all the code for all the videos that we write inside of one project and I'm going to call that project let's see let's make a Scala project actually right now I am in the Java view so let's switch over to the Scala view and now we're going to make a new Scala project the project name I'm going to use is video code and I am happy with all of the other options here so I'm just going to say finish. That gives us a little project over here on the left. And if we open it up, you'll see there is a source directory. And at least to start with, I am going to go ahead and in this source directory, I'm going to create a Scala object. Remember when we were doing this inside of the uh, command line, we made a file and we created, put a Scala object in it. We're going to write our object here. We'll call it hello world. And that goes ahead and creates our object for us. We'll put the same code inside of here. We'll define our main, which takes a single argument that we are calling args. That is an array of strings. It returns nothing to us. And inside of this method, we are going to say print line, hello world. Things you probably noticed as I was typing that Eclipse does things like underline errors if something is not valid. Now, it will do this while you're typing. Of course, if you're in the middle of typing, you expect to have errors. Even after you stop, sometimes you'll find that the errors aren't quite right. Uh, you want to save the file to make absolutely certain that it's done, that it's seen all of your changes. Uh, and generally, if you still have errors after you've saved the file, they're probably real errors. There are a few times where that might not be the case and we'll, we'll probably deal with those in, in subsequent videos. So here I have that same program. It's a hello world that we have written here inside of Scala uh, using Eclipse, and I want to run it. So that goes off beyond the bottom of the screen. Um, so I can right click and there is a run as option down there, but you can't see it. So I'm gonna pick the run as here, and it gives the option of a Scala application and when I run it, the console pops up and it gives us our message of hello world. Uh, while we're here, let's go ahead and let's put some comments on this code. Uh, Scala comments have are similar to ones that you might have seen in all the other C family languages, whether it's Java C or C++. You can do single line comments with slash slash. Now, by the way, that is a horrible comment you never need to write a comment like that because anyone reading your code knows that that prints something. Uh, but I needed something that I could comment and there isn't much happening in this program. You can also do comments with slash star and this does a multi-line comment. So for example, and you'll see Eclipse likes to put some pretty formatting on it for me.
Wow, that was uh And it even does the spell checking for you. Let's go ahead and let's put a carriage return in there. There we go. So multi-line comments start with slash star and they end with star slash and you can put anything inside of here as long as it's not star slash. There is kind of a special form of these. If you start with two stars and you'll see the eclipse colors these differently. Those are what are called Scaladoc co uh, comments and they follow the same style as Javadoc comments. Uh, these are actually more active comments and they kind of do something through a tool called Scaladoc. So I'll put a comment there. Uh, if you are writing a, a program, especially if it's libraries, it's going to be used by other people, you would typically put Scala.comments comments above each one of the uh, objects, classes, traits, and in front of public methods like main here. And so I'd want to have a description There are other special tags that you can put inside of here. At param args. There are a number of these and you can go you know, look them up in, in other places. Uh, what's special about these Scaladoc comments, and of course, you know, starting with slash star star is really the same as starting with slash star. Uh, as far as being a comment goes, what makes it different is that the Scaladoc tool will look at these and if they happen to be directly above a declaration of something, it will kind of attach them to it and Scaladoc builds web pages for the, um, the code that it's, that it's being run on. For example, the API for Scala really is nothing more than a Scala doc that was generated from the library source code for Scala. Uh, so it's very common to put these things in place and they are much more active comments and they actually do something if you use the Scala doc tool to generate things.